Good morning. I'm Carlton Sharp, pastor of Faith Christian Center Church right here in Beaumont, Texas. And we're here at the Pastor's Roundtable again. Hey, guys, welcome back. We're glad to be here. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Hey, uh, you know, over the past few weeks, we've been, we've been talking about the faith process, the, the asking, the believing, confessing, demonstrating, the expectation, and forgiving. But today we're going to start a new subject matter on our thinking. Okay. Oh, it is so powerful. Pastor, I see you got the scripture already uh, up. <laughs> so we're going to let you go ahead and read that. We're going to get started. Romans chapter 12. Very familiar passage of scripture. One of the, uh, I call it the premier scriptures when it comes to talking about the mind. And uh, can I just read out an amplified translation? Out amplified. Go right ahead. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse number one. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice, holy, well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. Now this next verse, verse number two, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Wow. Wow, that's powerful, that's powerful. And that's what we want to talk about because, you know, after, after a person gets saved, I mean, they need to renew your, their mind. That's right. You know, you always hear people say, well, when I looked at my hands, my hands looked new. When I looked at my feet, they did too. That, yeah. that, uh, if they had crusty hands before they got saved, they're going to have crusty <laughs> hands <laughs> after they got saved. But it's a matter of now renewing our mind, changing how we think according to, from what we used to think right. to the way God wants us to think right. based upon his word. Right. And, you know, I've always said that that's one of the aspects of our being that we tend to neglect. When it comes to, to our salvation, we talk about, like you said, so many other things. And I've noticed in the past when people get saved, you know, in the traditional sense, the first thing we want to do is, is start having church with them, you know. Not teaching them the things wow. that they need to know. Yeah. And even in this scripture, it says that our minds have to be renewed in order for us even, even to prove what is good and acceptable and perfect in God's plan and purpose for us. You know, he saves us. He calls us. He has sent us according to a purpose. But if we don't have our minds renewed in the word and by the word, Pastor Bonner, we can never even prove what God's will and plan for us is. That's right, because when you come into the kingdom, you come into the kingdom. Right. So whatever you had in you is in you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just got saved. You know, it don't take but a few seconds to get saved. Right. Lord, forgive me for my sin come in my heart. But now your mind is just like it was because it's untrained or unlearned right. in, the, in the area of spiritual things. And so, however you thought, that's how you think. Until right. you understand that to be a Christian, born again is one thing, but if you're going to be a successful believer following the pattern of God for your life, then you got to do something with your mind. That's right. And, and the Bible has so much to say about our mind. That's right. That, that, you know, people read books now and try to get, you know, the, all the, go, go into the, the, the secular market and try to get what, they say about the mind yeah. versus what God says about the mind and yeah. our thinking. Because if we don't change, you know, we'll live a dirty life, you know, based upon our own thinking from the past that's right. versus changing to what God wants us to live right now. That's right. And so that's why it's so important. Now, now you read that because if we, if we don't understand uh, and transform our thinking, uh, it will not produce the, the God's best for our life. That's right. I mean, that's, that's the key. That's right. Producing God's best for our life. And people, you know, you just mentioned secular books and, and so forth that's written. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, people go that route to try to, to, try to understand, uh, change the way that they think. But the, the, the uh, bottom line to even that is that these people, people that are in the secular uh, arena in the world, will take a biblical principle. And see, that's what happens in a, lot of, yeah. in a lot of cases, man. The world would take what God has given us in order for us to be successful as, as believers, as his children. And they'll write books about it and, you know, and then make it look like they are so brilliant. But it's actually, again, biblical principles and spiritual laws that they are applying and they're, they're, they're explaining it in a secular way and, and really kind of lead people away from God having people to believe that I can do it myself, you know. Right, right. Without God's help, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, and see, and there's a fine line in there. Uh, you know, because it's just like, it's just like, to me, it's just like, um, 
I was looking at the kids on the back row the other day at church. And I was thinking that they're being good as they can be at their age. Yeah. Wow. They can't think certain, you know, we could talk to them. I can talk to them about internet, making money, whatever I'm talking to them about. And they just looking like, mm-hmm, because all they know is games and playing yeah, and yeah. all that. But my point is, is it, unless you're exposed to another level of thought that already is, you can't think beyond what you can think. Yeah. And so I was looking at them. I said, they're just as good as they could be. They're being children because that's what they are. But as far as the thinking, they can't think like we think because they haven't been exposed to the, you know, and, and through, uh, not just through with the scriptures as far as our, our thinking is concerned. So you being the best you can at your think level. Wow. Everybody at their think level, yeah. whatever that is, yeah. you could be 97 and you can still be thinking like a child. See. You know, sometimes, sometimes people's inferior thinking will clash with the plan of God for their lives. That's right. Yeah, In Isaiah 55 verse 8, uh, he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, yeah. neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. So, so we could think a certain way. But I think, and if not renewed, See. can clash with the plan of God. That's right. Even in Jeremiah 29, he says, I know the thoughts that I have toward you. See? Okay? Yeah. God says, look, I know what my plan is for you, but if you don't think like I think, you'll never rise up to the level of my plan for your life. And you know what, Pastor? That's a very powerful scripture, <laughs> that Jeremiah 29, because it shows us that God is a thinker. That's right. God is yeah. a thinker. God uses his mind. So he gives us a mind to use just like him. See, and going back to Isaiah 55, where the Lord said, uh, 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 you know, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Then he goes on to yeah. talk about his word. Yeah. See, for so shall my word be to go forth out of my mouth. It, it will not, not return, return unto me void. So God has a purpose for giving us his word. I was, I was teaching on yesterday at the church pastors. I was teaching in Romans chapter 15, verse number four, where it says that for all things that are written afore, uh, beforehand were written for our understanding. For our understanding, yeah. yeah. That, that we through the scriptures and uh, might have and, and patience and hope and might have some expectation. But ne nevertheless, the point I'm trying to make is this. God gives us his word as a source of knowledge that is needed to change, to change the way we think. Yeah. See, he didn't give it to us for us to go in and, and, and use it as, as uh, information for uh, us setting up a, a performance, you know, a preacher. Right, right, right. But he tells right. us to feed, feed his people with knowledge and understanding wow. with the purpose of, of changing, our, uh, changing the way we think, man. That's and what it's all about. The whole thing is God can't get past your thoughts. That's right. Period. Yeah. And even if Whoop. you know the will of God, <laughs> you have to think in line with God. Yeah. So you can do God stuff. That's right. In the natural, I studied advertisement coming up and all yeah, that, yeah. you know. And uh, advertisement is sent to change your mind. That's right. The, you know, through repetition. They, they, they introduce you to something right. you didn't know about, and they call it whatever they call it. And then they got a jingle with it and some colors and whoever. And then all of a sudden, they want that hook to get you so you, so, so now you start to recognize their brand. Now understand that was totally introduced to us by the creator. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So now we want to go to the creator. Well, the God of heaven trying to introduce us to something and through repetition <laughs> and through meditation. That's right. You'll turn into, because the Bible says in Proverbs 23, as a man thinking I was, <laughs> in his heart, <laughs> that's See. what he is. See. And, 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 and so to add to that, you know, I think that, I just think that when it comes to the thoughts and, you know, somebody trying to in, interject your, their thoughts on you and try to make you not walk in the faith walk and not believe God and not believe what we believe because they have a thought. Well, this is the way I see it. Whatever they think is in their head. Don't have nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. So they can think whatever they want to think. Don't matter to me because the thought is in their head. That's what they are. It can't affect me unless I accept their thought. And people that don't know faith, they, they can't talk faith. If people don't live by faith, they can't help you live by faith and they don't know nothing about it. Now, you just said something very interesting, Pastor. You said that the secular society is trying to influence our thoughts through repetition. See? Yeah. Now, 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 if they understand God's system, 
then God is trying to influence our mind through repetition. Now, now I, want, I want you people to see this. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 12 and verse 13 says this. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. See. Though you know them and be established in the present truth, yea, I think in me, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Now, I hear people say all the time, and even in church, believers, well, I've heard that before. I heard that before, and I heard that before. Well, listen, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. That's right. And hearing, it cometh. So it's a continuous process. Repetitious information is how we change our thinking. That's right. So when you said that, it just leaped off in my spirit that, hey, listen, yes, we are trying to influence you with the word. Yeah. We're trying to feed this word to you over and over again. Why? To change how you think. And that's the way the mind works, since we're talking about the mind. And you used another term just a moment ago. A meditation. That's what meditation Ooh. is. Uh. That's what meditation is, and that's what meditation does. When you when you take the word of God and, and you 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 speak it and you think it over and over and over until it until it becomes a part of your your belief system. See, and your, the mind Ooh. operates off what according to what you believe. You said something else, Pastor. That was so very powerful too. God, God works through our mind. See, we are we are spirit being. We have a have a soul, and we live in a body. Yes. Well, a soul is part of, of our being. It, it it it's made up of the mind, the will, the inter intellect, the emotions, and the imagination. That's right. So the mind is a part of our our spiritual being. And God, and it's the it's the <sighs> I, I oftentimes say your mind is the bridge between the spirit and the physical realm. That's exactly God dealing with us through the spirit. But what he deals with us on a spiritual level can't manifest in the physical realm unless it goes through or is processed in our minds. And with your mind, you engage. You engage. See, yeah. see, see let, let, me, let me say what you said, kind of. The, 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 your, your, you, you have a body, soul, spirit. Your yeah, soul, yeah. just like you said, yeah. mind, will, mind. Okay. Your soul serves both. Your sir, soul serves the body. You're right. And your soul serves the spirit. That's right. And it's the connector. That's right. And so it's <laughs> all got to go through. See, because if God tell you to preach or go pray for somebody, you still have to make up your mind. You can't leave your mind out and say, well, God told me. And just, no, 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 no. So your mind has to agree with your spirit and you ain't going without your body. So you have to engage all parts of yourself in the will of God, then you're not double-minded. And, and that's why the natural man, the Bible says, cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness, because they don't understand this process. That's right. You know, about, you know, how it can, all of it connects together. Yes. And so, so that's why when people say, well, I, I just, I, I can't see that. I can't believe that. Well, okay, that's, that, that's you. That's on you. But, but my mind has been renewed to believe whatever God said. That's right. And you know what? That's, that's something. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, that's something yeah. else, man. Look, yeah, look, man. Look, your mind, ha the mind has to be renewed in order for us to even believe what God said. You know, in Romans chapter 12, again, it goes, but that you may be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. It can't happen for us as believers if our minds are not renewed. See, we, we, we can't jump our way, Pastor Varner, into understanding and knowing what God's will is. It has to be a function of your mind, and your mind has to be renewed uh, with God's word. And that's what the word is. The word is, a, is the information that we need Yes. in order for us to, to change the way we think, get our thinking in line with God. And we do that by getting our thinking in line with his word. You know, and Ooh. thinking is a... <laughs> go ahead. You know, no, no, go, go, no, 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 no. I was just thinking about how... You just doing what? Just thinking. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. About All right. how incapable we were of understanding God's word until we got truth. Yeah. See, see, our wow. minds have been contaminated when, when we were growing up, contaminated with the world system, but until we got the truth of God's word, we couldn't change how we think. That's right. So, so that's why, that's why, that's why the devil don't mind in church, the hooping, the hollering, the 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 emotional aspect of it, because in many cases that is not changing people's minds. That's right. That's right. You know, but when you start teaching this word, putting truth out there into the atmosphere, then all of a sudden something happens in people's mind to say, mm -hmm. "Oh, I got to change." See. Wow. Because they couldn't believe it until they heard it. They couldn't even think about it 
until an avenue was opened up to where they could think. And that's why, you know, people don't just go to, they shouldn't, go to church just to see how the preacher going to dress and how the choir going to sing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But they going because that man, a woman that's anointed by Almighty God, is saying something. There's something on them that's coming out of their spirit that's empowered by the Holy Spirit. And what we do without realizing it sometimes is we speak into people. When you preach, when we preach, we, we're not just saying word. For those that's hearing, mm -hmm. we speak into them. And the word and the anointing starts to reset what they already got in them, and it starts to overcome wow. anything that's opposed to what God already said. Well, look what, look what the word says. Glory in, in John chapter 8, verse 31. Then Jesus said unto the, to the Jews which believed on him, yeah. If you continue in my word, then, then are you my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth. Wow. And that truth shall make you free. It's going to change how you think. You know what? If ye continue in my word. <laughs> See, again, it goes back to what you said just a moment ago, Pastor. God has given us his word. Yes. And the word, God's word is supernatural. You know, that's a supernatural power. God's word are not, God's words are not like ordinary words. No. Yeah. See? Yeah. They're not like ordinary words, man. Ooh. And because of the way God has built us, if we receive something as truth, if we believe it, because that's what, that's, what, that's what believing is. Believing is receiving and accepting something as truth, as a reality, see? So if we hear God's word and believe God's word, see, that's the key that unlocks the power of God's word, yeah. see? Believing, a belief, belief in the word, believe, believing that the word of God is the truth, see? Because, again, we're built in a way to where if we accept something as truth, Yes. Then it's going to work. It's going to work in us, whether it is truth or not. But it's if we, in our minds, if we say, okay, that's the truth, I accept that as mm. it being the truth, now that becomes a part of our belief system, and, and we'll start operating according to that. Things will start happening. See, that's another aspect of the mind that we're going to get into. Yeah, yeah. The power. Yeah. The power of the mind, yeah. man, when you start thinking things in a certain way. And that's why that scripture says, as a man thinketh. Yeah, yeah. In his heart. In his heart, but, so is he. Man, we're going we to get to that. Ooh, that's but, <laughs> but, 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 but see, that that you said now, you said the last time. You, you, you said the last time we met, when you, when you believe, you accept. Accept it, that's right. So, so you accept something that's spoken because you heard it. And you, 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 you engage with it. You, you believe. Yeah. So you accept that, okay, well, that's true for me. I might not be seeing a manifestation, but that is the truth. Yeah. And then Jesus said in uh, John 6, 63. I got it right there, man. <laughs> it is the Go spirit ahead, that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit. Yes. And they are life. I was, I was so, on, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so they are spirit. So the word, so, so they're not just wow. sound. It, it, it's, it's spirit. It, it, it's spirit and life. That's the right. word of God is spirit and life. Jesus said, what I'm telling you, if you're hearing me, I'm affecting your spirit. And what's coming out of me can change your life. Because that word is going to penetrate your spirit. Because <laughs> you're speaking, he's speaking into you. That's why we get excited. That's why people clap. That's why they get loud. Oh, because it's affecting their real man, which is a spirit man. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing about when you hear an anointed word is, you know, you, you do know that we hear words more than once. Yeah. You might have heard it once, but it keep talking to you. That's right. The word that, that you, you, how can I remember what you said last time Yeah. about believing is accepted? Now, you know, that was whenever it was, that was, that ain't now, but I, I still remember. So how, how do I do that? Because what you said got planted in me. Right. And when you said it, now I can call because oh. your energy and your, your words that came out of your mouth, I, I heard what you said. So they went into me. So now I'm carrying yeah. that revelation of what you said with me. And I can bring back up what you said. Yeah. It works the same way with Jesus. It works the same way with an anointed <laughs> vessel. That you, that's why people can be sitting at home and say, man, that guy was preaching and something hit me in my house. But see, that's why they can do that. But see what happened with you and what Glory happened in the whole God. process is you received it as true. Yes. Now, if you, if you believe that what I was saying was, was a lie, 
you wouldn't, you wouldn't have received it as readily and it wouldn't have penetrated the spirit aspect of your being and ended up in your mind. Yes. See, so the, the key again is receiving what, what you're hearing and believing it to be the truth. Man, and you said something about you, it brought back to remembrance. And that's what Holy Spirit does when we get this word down on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. He says that the Holy Ghost have been given to bring back to remembrance that which I said to you. Yeah. We, yes. Wow. Hey, yeah. You don't do it, man. Because, because the word keep talking. Yeah. The, the word keep talking. Yeah. The, <laughs> see, we, and that's why we need to keep putting the word out because now the Holy Spirit got something to work. I couldn't believe something until I heard it. That's right. You know what I mean? And That's then right. and, and then I heard, I heard, like, wait, hold up. Nothing is impossible to them. I, when I first got saved in college, I didn't know a whole bunch of nothing because I didn't. I was in church all my life, done stuff. But I remember one day I was just kind of thinking. I said, okay, I'm supposed to meditate on the scripture. That's what I said. So I'm sitting up there and I'm thinking. And then I'm thinking, and all of a sudden, this thought came in, in 73. Never forget as long as I live. We who don't think. In 73. 73. I still, how did I remember that? Why is it still alive? Why is it still alive? That, that's, that, no, I know. That's okay. But that's a good point. That's a good point. And I heard this voice say, I heard this, uh, well, it was whatever you want to call it. But anyway, I heard this thought. I heard this thought. It says, we who don't think, I'm thinking, we who don't think are controlled by those who do. I never read that. I never heard that, not a wow. philosophy. We who don't think, uh, and so I'm thinking, okay. So then I started comparing Adam and Eve. Well, the devil started thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I need to get in there and get them to violate so they can get kicked out. And the devil started thinking, I need to meet Jesus in the wilderness, and I need to give him some temptation. So the devil started thinking, you need to steal that money because they don't know you got that money and you got it in your tent. And so, so, so the devil is a thinker He's a thinker too. too. That's right. That's my point. The devil is a thinker too. So That's he's right. thinking and strategizing on how to get you to fall, give up, cave in, and That's right. quit. Wow. That's right. That's so he right. come up at you with a plan. That's right. To try to get you out of the will of the living God. And if you don't know what God's word is, if you don't know and understand what God's will is, he can get you out of your righteousness. That's why so many believers, when they first get saved, they have such a struggle with their salvation. You know, they're, they're struggling because... Their minds are not being renewed. They're not being fed the knowledge and the understanding that they need to understand now that this life that we now have in Christ Jesus is a life of faith. You understand what I'm yep. saying? Oh, yep. it's, it's a different way of living. When the Lord tell us, okay, that we should live by faith and walk by faith, this is a different kind of life. It's a lifestyle that we were not living before we got saved. We lived according to our senses. That's right. That's right. So now God is telling us to live by faith, not by what you see, not by what you feel, not by what you hear, but by what you know is truth and by what you believe. See, so, so saints, I mean, new, man, that's the first thing we should do after we get them saved oh, yeah. is start teaching them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Teaching them, see, because they're going to have to renew their mind. Right. Their mind is going to have to be renewed according to Romans chapter 12, verse number two. Now, I was, I was looking at uh, Proverbs 16 in verse 3. It says, uh, commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Whoa. The Amplified puts it this way. Commit your works to the Lord, submit and trust them to him, and your plans will succeed if you respond to his will and his guidance. See? Man, you talk about my thoughts shall be established if I just commit my works to God? Yeah. That, that sounds like I need to renew my mind. That's right. It sounds like I need to be a thinker. Yes. I need to think, see, yeah. and not just, not just act randomly or do what I think I should do in church or at church <laughs> as a child of God. That's right. You know what I told them? Yes, I told <laughs> the congregation that, look, see, the problem is this with a lot of believers. We think we should live two, two different lives. There's a church life in the church on Wednesdays and Sundays, and then when we go outside the door, we're trying to live another life. Yeah. But no, man, it's one life, That's right. and it's the life of faith, see? And That's it. that has to be ingrained in our thinking, see? The, the way to live this life, we have to be taught it. God said, teach my people, and grace shall be their peace. Yes, sir. Wow. I was just, I, I don't think I was going to say that. See, I was starting something here, boy. I ain't playing. But see, <laughs> see, I think that we need to think about what we thinking about. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes we just think 
because of see see oh. e e every thought get there because it's it's borrowed from somewhere or it's conjured up okay and so sometimes we don't think about what we are thinking about Ooh we and so, so 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 if the Bible says a man thinketh in his heart so is he then if I keep on going the wrong direction and doing crazy stuff or whatever I, instead of First thing Shelby need to do <laughs> is get himself together and start thinking about, well, well okay, you know why you did that? Because you was thinking about, why don't you think about what you're thinking about before you go do something crazy? Okay. You need to think. Okay, okay, well, think about what you think about, right? Yes, yes sir. Philippians. <laughs> <laughs> Philippians chapter 4 says, and verse 8 says this, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, yes. whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any, any praise, what? Think, think on, on, these, think on things. these things. So the Bible think. tell us what to think about. That's right. That's right. But the world say it don't matter what you think. See. But the scripture says. You better know what you're you, thinking about. You, okay. <laughs> so, so, so now that's a whole list, boy. That's a sermon. That's, you know what? That's a weak meditation right there. If people take those, what you just read. Wow. And break down each, get a definition for each one of those things that the Bible said. And start doing that. Okay. Whatever things are lovely. Okay. This lovely. I want to slap my neighbor. <laughs> I want to cheat on my taxes. Yeah, I yeah. Wanna, now, and what if things are pure? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I, I, they don't know. You know, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Whatever <laughs> things are honest. Yeah. Okay, well, you need, you know, whatever things are lovely, yeah. whatever thing, if there be any virtue in it, if there be any, you need to think, think on these things about that. So I need to think about some stuff. Man. And you know, you know what? Of course, now understand this. This is God's word. Yeah. You know, this is God's word. <laughs> See, God. What we're reading, wow. what we're, we're talking about. This is God's word. That's right. So, so this, again, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. God told Paul or whoever wrote this, told him to write it for a reason, for a purpose, because God knows that what we think about is what we're going to have in our lives. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right, So right. God says, these are the things, this is the kind of life I want you to have. Wow. I want you to have a life that's based on truth. I want you to have a life, all these things, peace and so forth. And, I want you to have these things in my life, but God can't, wow. God can't just give us those things. No, mm. no, 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 no. Mm. Those things are going to come to us because these are the things that we think on. As a man thinketh in his heart, God says. That's right. So shall, you know, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yes. So God gives us, God tells us. And I remember Pastor, Pastor Bonner, the first time I discovered this scripture, I, I, I went, whoa, whoa. <laughs> God is telling me how to think. He's telling me what to think so that I can have what he wants me to have in my life. Because verse number nine says, yeah. this, the things which you have learned and received and heard oh, my and seen in me practice these things in daily life. Uh -huh. And the God who is the source of peace and well-being will be with you. Wow. But it starts with the way you think and what you think. So that was eight things that God said. Now, you said some. you said something very important earlier. If I just take the time to just think. On truth, yeah, every day. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Then it'll change my line behavior. Okay. <laughs> yes. Sir. And what is true? The word of the God. word of God. That's right. Then it says, if I would think on being honest, then you won't be cheating on your taxes, like you said. That's right. <laughs> you know, you have little, you you, you have Shaquita's kid on your tax return. Yeah, you know, they yeah. ain't lived in your house. <laughs> you say. I mean, just pure, lovely, a good report, virtue, and praise. Those are the things we ought to be thinking about. That's right. That's right. It, it, it tells you what to think about. That's right. It, it, he didn't leave it to chance. I'm going to tell you what to think about. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, oh he can't preach. I wish he'd hurry you up. They, you know what? She, I'd hit high note. You know, is that lovely? Is that a lovely thought? No. Toward somebody. No. If it's one of your, wow. your parishioners, one of your, 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 your spiritual brothers or sisters in Christ, and you thinking evil of them or their family or whatever. Is that a lovely thought wow. toward your brother and your sister? <laughs> no, it's not. So how, I can't so I can't never do you no harm. Ooh. I can't never attack you if I'm not thinking attack and harm. That's right. If I'm thinking lovely toward you, I want the best for you, your kids, That's your right. family, your life. If I'm think if I'm obeying just that one scripture right, right there. 
I'm always on your side in my faith and conversation. And see, always. Since, and since we're talking about mine, the Amplified uh, translation of that scripture says this. It, it gets on down. If, any, if, if there's anything worthy of praise, think continually. Wow. Think continually. That's all the time. All the time because it's, it's, it's important or necessary for us to think continually on things in order for those things to affect our thinking. I tell the saints all the time, the first time you hear the word that comes out of the mouth of the preacher, number one, you don't believe it. I mean, believe with the heart. You know, you hear it and you receive it intellectually, but in order for that word to become a part of your, your being, your spirit, your mind, that's where, that's where the repetition and reiteration of meditation comes in. I tell them, no, you don't believe it the first time you hear it. Not the way that yeah. you need to believe yeah. it in order for it to work effectually in you, say. No, you don't, you don't, you don't believe it the first because, time. Because you can't. You can't, no. You, you can't. No, no. Unless you've heard it. Yeah, I'm Repetition. Say, unless you've heard that, it over and over and over that, again. That, that's how you learn. Listen. That's how you learn your ABCs. ABC. That's, right. <laughs> that's what I'm right. talking about. <laughs> over learn, and over again. Learn how to play the piano or whatever you learn. You, wow. It's repetition. A, B, C, D, F, G. A, B, C, yeah, D, F, yeah. G. A, B, C. Right, oh, right. Okay. A, B, C. You know, if you, and I don't play. See, you still but, remember that from your childhood. That A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> I learned that when I was five. Okay. But, but, but it's stuck. It. I've been carrying wow. that knowledge. See. And so people need to go listen to a man or woman of God who got some real knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Not just the entertainment so you feel good and happy and cheery and then you don't know nothing. You ought to know something. When you open, the devil ought to know, oh, no, bro, you attack this brother right here, you, you cut flex with him. Yeah. You got something <laughs> on your hand. Man, this brother right here, he's anointed. He got the word of God. He got power. You can't, devil, you cannot touch this brother and sister when they are armed. People get destroyed for lack of knowledge. Oh, but when goodness. you get the knowledge from God and you walk in it, the knowledge of who you are, the knowledge of who's with you, and the knowledge of who the devil is not, and the fact that he's already defeated, man, the devil can't miss. He can't, he'll attack, but he'll go down every single That's right. time. That's right. Every know, single time. You know, the Bible says in uh, uh, Matthew, I think it's 22, that you do error in not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God, God when you don't have knowledge. Yes. You know? See, see, that's why it's so important that people who are watching today, that they hear this word over and over and over again to change how they think. That's right. Because we're going we to get to this later on because <laughs> uh, how our thinking changes our behavior. Because how you think, it, it affects how you believe. That's right. And how you believe affects how you act. That's and we, right. And we're going to get into all of that in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in another lesson. <laughs> but today, we, we're, look, I mean, look, the time already gone. Wow. Wow. Already gone for this session. Wow. But, but I tell you what, we're going to come back. We're going to come back on tomorrow, and we're going to talk some more about how you change your thinking. Well, have you ever asked yourself, where, does I, where did I get my thinking from? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna answer that question. Where yeah. did you get your thinking from? Because yeah. if you could yeah. identify that aspect of your life, then you can start saying, oh, now I could make change because this is where I got my thinking from. But we're going to do that on, uh, on, uh, on next week, uh, on tomorrow. So listen, you come back. Now you remember this. We're building faith. We're building bridges. And we're building lives. And Romans chapter 12 verse 3 says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. We'll see you next time on the broadcast.